Hi everybody, it's Q and welcome back to my tapes. So in this episode, we're literally going to be talking about Azalea Banks as a stunt queen. If that's anything you are interested in listening to, then keep on watching. So I feel like I have to give a few disclaimers. (laughs) First things first, I feel like nobody's going to fucking watch this video. And that's literally the only reason why I'm making this. Because I feel like I can express my thoughts and like think about this and share it with just a very few amount of people (laughs) and not like a large amount of people. So I'm praying, I'm praying to my man, JC, (laughs) (laughs) that nobody actually watches this. If too many people watch this video, I'm going to like, I'm going to private it. So that's kind of like contingent, you know what I mean? Um, And this is like really important for me making this video is that not a lot of people listen to it. Um, That's like huge thing. Okay. So I really want to get into just like azealia banks is a stunt queen like i don't even know if i want to name it that like i don't even know if this is what i want to name this episode but like she is like a spectacle like azealia banks is a spectacle and i feel like people just keep feeding into it because they keep talking about her Like I am now, but, you know, I'm hoping, like, not a lot of people watch this. So, you know, I'm not adding too much into it if only, like, five people watch the video. But, like, she's a spectacle. Like, everything about what she does is a spectacle. And I I can't, like, fucking explain. Like, I can't explain, like, I can't explain, like, how, like, it's not even comical. It's, like, it's just shenanigans. It's just, like, busybody. It's just, like... No, no, no. Busybody isn't a good word to use to describe. It's just, it's spectacle. It's like very grand and audacious and like hyperbole and like, oh my goodness. And oh my gosh. Like, and, and I just feel like when will, when will, it's not we, I was was about to say, what will we learn? It's not we, it's not when we learn. We not, it's not me. Okay. You, when will you learn? When will you learn? And I think this is why I'm even making this video. Like, Despite the affects of me obviously bringing up somebody that I'm just like, why do you guys keep bringing this person up? Which is why sometimes I wish I had a Patreon because then it wouldn't go into like the public-ish lexicon. But I'm just like, do you guys not realize that she is a spectacle? Like, do you not realize that she is like, you know, going through things as you point and to your head you know a few times tap on your head a few times and then repeat after me going through a few things like you know (sighs) like I don't know what I don't know where to start I don't know what to tell you like I don't I don't understand like what is it that what is it that you're not understanding like I think that's what I'm just like what is it that you're not understanding with people who are spectacles People who are a part of the spectacle of society by Dembora. Okay, like, what is it that we're not understanding? The spectacle of the celebrity as it pertains to consumerism and capitalism. Like, what don't you get? Like, what what is it that we're not getting? Like, what don't you understand? So for any of you who are just like, what's going on? Like, what are you talking about, Q? Like, what's going on? Like, what is, what could possibly be going on? Like talking about this um i don't know i don't i don't even want to get into it oh okay okay nobody's gonna watch this i'll just i'll just recap i'll just recollect for you so for those of you who don't know which i don't care i don't care i it the reason why i'm talking about is for the spectacle part okay like i feel like it sounds like i care but i don't um she had recently i guess broken up with somebody that she was acquainted with um dating um got proposed to was allegedly gonna marry we'll get back to that in a second um and you know it's just a lot of issues you know um i think i'm gonna put a screenshot of something that was sent to me um but i'll go ahead and read out the screenshot for you and and this is in regards to the person that she dated as it pertains to the nft thing which we are also going to talk about how i feel like that was money laundering allegedly that was money laundering like that shit was some money laundering and i think i might make a whole separate video on like these like cryptocurrencies and how like duplicitous characters are obviously using it to money launder and how like any sort of virtual currency that mimics capitalism 
cryptocurrency and its systems and stock trading is not ethical and it's not revolutionary and it's not going to help all these inf- disenfranchised communities that you guys keep reporting that crypto is going to help. <laughs> but that's another conversation for another day. Um, but yes, in regards to NFCs and NFTs and crypto in this regards, I think that this shit was money laundering, allegedly. Um, and we're going to get to that. So this isn't so this statement was in regards to this ex person and what was going on. <clears throat> I'm just, this is in regards to the sex tape that Azealia Banks and Ryder Rips sold through like Erethium or whatever for 11000 and then it was bought and relisted for $258 million. We'll be speaking about that soon. <clears throat> I'm just going to be completely honest about this sex tape thing. Also, excuse my voice. I'm, I'm like recovering. I'm like getting better. I'm drinking my ginger and, you know cardamom tea salt water gargle honey tea hot water like you know um <clears throat> i'm gonna be completely honest about the sex tape thing y'all know i was in miami chilling living la vie i met Ryder on instagram and he flies to miami to meet me we have a fun time in miami my apartment wasn't ready yet so he offered me to go back to la and stay with him in the meantime I asked him for help finding someone to do the three-day scans of my cat's mandible and make earrings. He got jealous and kicked me out. I went to a friend's house and the same day gaslights me with a suicide attempt, saying that he was going to take 10 bars of Xanax, drink some alcohol, and sleep for a few days. Me knowing how bad of a combo Xanax and booze are, I wake up the next morning, rush back to his apartment to find him face down in bed with a loaded 380 sig and a knife. I got super scared, called his mom and went out to get pet Pedialyte and soup to try and hydrate him and get him to vomit. Things get better for like a day. I was happy just to not be fighting. He randomly proposes to me. And I'm like, eh, but once again, trying not to argue. So I go along with it. We go to meet his mom in Palm Springs. Everything is cool. Then he gets upset about the people stealing the idea for some dumb collage and starts getting manic about NFTs. Next, Ryder coerces me into putting the sex tape up because he's obsessed with shock value and clout chasing and says he wants to make million dollars selling NFT. Me trying not to spark another argument, I drum up some fake enthusiasm and tell him, sure, do the audio only. He starts rummaging through photo outtakes of Grimes, saying he should sell them because he's upset she unfollowed him on Instagram. Hmm. That was an ad lib. Let me stop. Um... He calls Shea Papa trying to devise a scheme to basically exploit Kanye via NFTs with unreleased songs, remixes, and outtakes of Kanye saying wild shit. I tell him no, because that would ruin artists' trust in you and people will not hire you afterwards. Now, he is threatening to release the visual component to the sex tape without my permission saying if you don't fuck with me i won't fuck with you i packed my shit went back to my friend's house for a few days then flew back to miami to clear my mind and get back on track i just feel really horrible and taken advantage of right now full stop end statement Let's talk about it. Well, there's nothing for me to talk about. I just wanted to cite, you know, what was said, you know, about whatever was going on with their, I don't want to say pseudo relationship, but whatever interaction that it is they were having. So I'm not really going to be commenting on anybody. Unlike Azealia, like in her questioning, like victim, like I I just like, I, 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 y'all already know, like, I, I just like really like sick shit, like like in, in the dome like you're not what like you know so i'm not i'm not i'll do everyone one better we're not here to question somebody being like threatened with like a sex tape and like whether or not we should protect her or believe women or whatever like 
I, I'm just like, that's not the sort of conversation we're having, but I do find it kind of interesting. I will always find it interesting that like, and obviously I'm not in support of all of that anti-black racism or anti-black or like, you know, misogynoir or anything. But I do find it interesting, like her talking about FKA twigs, but like we remember her talking about racist actions from, I believe Pierce Morgan, once again, Pierce Morgan, like spitting on her, like and calling her like the n-word or something like that and obviously i would never i'm not ever gonna i i don't care if it's who i don't care if it's a problematic figure like i'm not not a matter of questioning but i'm just like i'm not going to hear question your humanity you're saying that something happened to you like i'm not like you know you do that to other black women and that's like a very specific thing like as a side note like azealia banks has like a lot of vitriol to like black women like a lot like a lot of vitriol like a lot of really disgusting things to say about black women and i think obviously the reason is is because we know that she has internalized issues and like she projects that onto people but it it doesn't make it any less of something that she shouldn't take responsibility for which i also find that interesting that she talks hot shit and like she doesn't want to be held accountable for her actions like it's kind of weird like it's it's kind of weird like people want to sometimes use like internal like mental issues and like psychosis to not take accountability for their actions one moment you do want to take accountability and say that you don't have mental issues and then you want to you do something bad and then you do have mental issues and that's why you body shamed doja cat and called her a sick cow like person you made fun of megan the stallion megan the stallion doing some disordered eating shit drinking some juices cleanse and probably taking laxatives allegedly (laughs) and so i just find it i kind of find it interesting like a lot of like lizzo like fat shaming her and like making fun of you know the way she looks which side note if any of these fucking celebrities or like their people are listening to this lizzo like let me tell you something you know what you shouldn't have done why the fuck are you making a tiktok with her music like don't stream that shit like hear no see no evil like hear no see no evil let me tell you something if i became an anr like and i heard that this person was sending talking about me crazy like i would send you a cease and desist i would send you a cease and desist like stop fucking talking about me use all those fucking connections and don't all these people have like all these industry connections i'm surprised they haven't tried to get her instagram taken off could you fucking imagine i will erase you i will erase you that's what i would be doing like i'm not fucking playing with you do what michael jackson did buy these people's masters you know she's in a spat with people and you know this is really evil shit i don't know if i would be able to do this i'm sorry like that's capitalism sort of stuff that i don't think i'm i would ever want to engage in but i'm just saying like i find it kind of funny like the way that you antagonize and say all these disgusting things about these black girls like i don't i don't i don't know it's 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 and that's what i'm just like it's 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 confusing it's confusing it's confusing like it's confusing like why don't people realize like that this is probably art part of an orchestrated spectacle that she has created with people in her life like okay so yeah that was her statement um i find it interesting you talk so much shit on black women i find it interesting that now you're having this issue with this guy that is essentially threatening to publish like revenge porn like of you he took a video of you having sex with him without your permission like you know like you know it's just like kind of interesting like not tables of turn like you know if you're somebody like who if you're somebody are you like an eye for an eye like so if somebody does something wrong if somebody says something crazy about like or it says something wild excuse the language like you know about you know certain groups of people and they have to get canceled over it or it, when i say canceled it's just being held responsible and they like lose opportunities like are you like an eye for an eye like are you how do you guys feel about that like are you sort of somebody who you're just like well you were here questioning and making fun of fk twigs being like abused in this relationship and then said oh so i can become popular now for being fat and getting herpes and i'm like why would you say something like that let me tell you something i feel like and I think she said this, but like, 
She said, most of the things I say on the internet, I would never say in person because I'm li liable to get slapped. I'm liable to get slapped. And that's how I feel. I feel like you would never say these things to people's faces, you know? And so I'm not trying to say that I would be Jay Prince in this bitch, but like, I will threaten you. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do if I had all this capital and power, but I would ruin you. I would ruin you. Like, don't ever speak of me. Don't ever speak of my essence. Like, and I just, I guess I wonder, like, do any of these like celebrities not have like favors that they can call in? Ain't nobody that they know that can get people out the paint like in, in and i'm not trying to say threaten the black women i'm just saying like are y'all eye for an eye like if someone comes at you crazy like what do you do like what do you do you know what i mean like are you like no like you want to talk all this mess okay 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 hmm. okay you know so yeah um let's get on to the other topics and then we're pretty much gonna round out um so when will you guys admit, you know, essentially like concluding like the first and second part of this video, when will you guys just admit that Azula Banks is a stunt queen? Like what what is not under what is it being clear made clear here? Like when? It's not if, it's when. Um so yeah, I'm going to, you know, and I'll probably, you know, re-ask that question at the end, but right now I'm just going to briefly touch on this NFT thing. That NFT thing was money laundering like allegedly like if you guys look into that person who sold it they couldn't even come up with a better name and i'm like so y'all are just like exchanging money so like what is going on here like you know what i mean like i feel like people aren't really looking into this i kind of want to talk about nfts as it relates to the music industry and how i feel like if i ever became an artist i would literally just sell my music i would literally sell flash drives I'm, I'm like not joking i don't have a cd player obviously i'm not before my time <laughs> no shade no shade to people who are older but like before my time um but i will be selling flash drives i will be selling mp3 files and that's it i'm like so serious like if i became a music artist like like and, and the reason why i say this is because i'm like if you're black i feel like black people need to be compensated in fire in money that is real like in this reality and not this like virtual replication of currency like that they, they they say that you they need you to hold on to it for other people to get roped in before it can raise in value and i'm like no if you i feel like if you're making art and you're black and you are selling art commercially you should be able to be paid in money okay in real money and so i just feel like I feel like we can talk about how we can decentralize and like not get into exploitative contracts without having to engage in these like parallel systems that aren't really revolutionary. And I feel like they're not really impacting these communities that these people keep purporting it's going to affect all this NFT, this, all this NFT, that, and the people who are supposed to be benefiting it from the most don't have access to computer literacy or even computer hardware or even like internet. These black and brown communities are the people who you people are saying would mostly benefit by a decentralized system. Meanwhile, these same tech people, these same white Asian tech people do not want to disclose, like they don't want to talk about what they're not doing to help these communities who are disenfranchised. If you are running a tech company right now, you should be having a serious investment, serious investment and serious donation and grant funding to black communities and their access to computer hardware and computer literacy from schools and to communities. There are neighborhoods right now in the age of like everybody's moving to this online hybrid, online internet, like education system. And meanwhile, a lot of these poor black people do not have internet. I've said this before, and like this can be a completely different video topic, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. If if we are to go into like another like digital revolution, which we are like kind of we've already entered like with artificial intelligence and like machine learning and like how that how, how that's going to affect us, you know, as well as other things in terms of like advancing technology, like what's the nave wave. All I'm trying to say is that when we get into this next wave of like technological innovation, whole scores of communities are going to be left behind. 
And that's really scary. Whole communities are going to be left behind. So before all of you start rushing into this NFT shit, which I, I still feel like if you're black, you need to be put that shit on Bandcamp. Like, come on, put that shit on Bandcamp. You know, it's sad iTunes is shutting down or whatever, but I'm like, I would sell my music. I want people to compensate me in cash. That is what black Americans need. If you're black and you're making all this work, you're black, you're, you're making this work. People need to pay you in money that you can use in a stable fiat currency that is backed by a resource that governments are not willing to give up or to relinquish and you be compensated for your work. Instead, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of black artists being roped into this crypto shit. And I'm like, meanwhile, your managers and your labels are still being paid with these deals in cash. Like, peep that shit. Peep that shit. Peep the fact that the people who are managing your arrears and your affairs are getting paid in fiat. They're getting paid in USD. They're getting paid in cash. They're getting paid with a wire transfer. I feel like there are implications of not even to talk, oh my God, not even to talk of the environmental impact for just like one of these transactions to fulfill one of these transactions, how much environmental spend it is just to do one transaction. I'm fucking sick. I am sick. And people just aren't reading it. People are like, well, oh my God, I saw this one. It was like, oh, compared to like the, the textile industry or the aeronautic industry, it's not that bad. I'm like, it doesn't fucking matter. More people are hearing about it. More people are using it. This is a lot of energy consumption. But no, all y'all want to talk about is money. Allegedly. Because it seems that some of you people aren't even buying this shit. It's like you, you're buying this shit. You're buying this shit posed as a fucking farmer from Wyoming, uh, Rolton Ryder. I mean, okay, if you guys don't know, the name of the, the boy that this girl was dating, Azealia, was like Ryder Rips. I'm like, y'all aren't slick. Y'all aren't slick. You are not slick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is not allegedly. This is all alleged. Like, you know, money laundering alleged. Like, um, this is an alleged statement that has been made. Alleged statements that have been made in this podcast. Like, you know, podcast. So it's just like, get real. Okay. Get real. That, like, you know, like, y'all ain't fooling me. And if you black and you have a manager and they're trying to push you into the NFT shit, you say, look, you are going to help me sell this shit. I don't care if people have to buy this and it gets sent to their email. I don't care what we have to do. I don't care what we have to do. I don't care. We And actually, there's actually this artist called Gum MP3 on Twitter. Search him up or Dirty Bird. He has like, he goes by two names and he does sell physicals. Like he sells CDs. I don't have a car. So I don't, I, you know, I don't even know like if cars come with CD. Play. I, the, you see, you guys can tell like how, how young I am. Like, I, I don't even know if cars come with CD players anymore. I, I don't know. I haven't seen one. I don't know. I, I haven't experienced one in a while. I haven't been in an Uber in a while. Like, I, you know what I mean? Hashtag quarantine. Um, you know, but, 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 but you know what? A pimped out, like flash drive i can do that shit i'm i'll look into it and get back to you guys okay so nothing she does is real is pretty much what i'm trying to get at conclusion of this video nothing she does is like real like i don't i don't know if like people don't realize it but everything that she does is a spectacle it's like it's it's a show it's a circus it's a circus it's chaotic it's a spectacle i don't i think it's facetious i think that it's not even real um and yeah, you know what? Thank you for listening to this video. I'm glad I was able to express myself. I'm glad that I'm not a celebrity and I can kind of like express myself in a safe and non-salacious, non-libel, non-slander manner. Um, I never claimed I was a journalist or a necessarily like a cultural, well, I might be a cultural critic, but you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm just saying like, I feel grateful that I, I don't know what sort of position you have to be in as like a celebrity where like you have to resort to all these antics as a way to stay relevant like I don't know what that feels like I don't know what that's like I don't know what that feeling is like and so every day I think we should be grateful that we are kind of able to meander through our non-spectacalized lives as not necessarily being these front end for consumerism I, I can't fucking imagine what that's like um, so Godspeed to her and that's it. Thank you for listening to another one of my tapes. 
And, you know, I'll see you soon. Bye.